What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is Victoria Scott and today I'm going to take you grocery shopping with me. I recently moved to a new house and we have no groceries. This is going to be my grocery haul from scratch and you guys get to see what I purchased as a fitness model, fitness athlete and coach. What I would do if I was starting completely from scratch as a beginner and what I'm doing to stock my house with all the good stuff and all the extras that I buy to make my food delicious and still healthy. So we are going to make at least two stops today. If you are somebody who is a little bit of a foodie, you probably have found it's hard to find everything you need at one grocery store. So right now we are at Sprout. I think it's a national chain. I know we have them in California. They have them here in Nevada, but it is sort of a Whole Foods without spending your whole paycheck. More of like that farmer's market uh, vibe. So they have some unique stuff here that's definitely skews on the healthier side, but they still have a lot of staples as well. So we're gonna start here. Anything that I can't get here, I might go to big grocery store and I might, if I still need a couple extra things, I might also stop at Trader Joe's. We also have a great butcher down the street from our house. And I like to go there to get some specialty cuts of beef and sometimes some pork or chicken. Let's go. So I'm starting off by getting most of my carb sources right now. I'm gonna do some tortillas. And I always look at the ingredients. I try to get the ones that have the fewest uh, ingredients. So this one has like a paragraph of stuff added to it. This one is water, yellow corn, like a bonding agent, and then lime juice. That's it, four things. So we're gonna go with this one. Okay, so sourdough. One of the things about sourdough that's great, it's just easy on your digestion. Definitely a healthier bread option to go with. Bananas, because camera guy likes bananas. And then we'll do some limes too. You can't open. I always like to have some fresh lime juice, either with like soda water or I put it on like salads. It's great for cooking. I feel like having potatoes this week. These are fun. I love these purple potatoes. So I think I'm gonna cook some of these this week too. You may have heard this before. In traditional grocery stores, they say shop the perimeter and stay away from the, the middle, which is usually where all the processed stuff is. And it's really funny because this store is more of a health food focused store. So all the produce is actually in the middle. The packaged items are kind of in the corner on the side. So I usually only shop in those aisles when I'm looking for, like I said, dressings or sauces, maybe almond butter, cooking spray, that kind of stuff. Not so much like packaged items that could be like my meal. My meals are gonna come from the stuff in this section here fruits, vegetables, we'll get some meat from the, the butcher shop, and then we're gonna pick up some sauces here as well. All right, so we got some avocados here. If you're somebody who doesn't like to do a lot of prep, you can obviously shop the, the section where things are already kind of cut up and chopped up and portioned out a little bit better for you. You don't have to worry about all the prep that goes with the whole produce. I love to get some shredded cabbage. Might be something I need at the other store because I like that as a crunchy kind of filler in my food. Now, I'm still in a maintenance build phase right now, so I'm not eating as many vegetables as I typically do in a cut because I'm already so full from all my other food. But shredded cabbage is one of my go-tos just for adding that crispy crunchiness to my meals. There's some red cabbage. I could do this one. A little extra crunch. So we're gonna grab this one. All right, let's go. If you're someone who doesn't like to cook a whole lot, they always have these frozen rice bags. The only thing is you have to look at the ingredients. This one is just rice and water. That's all that's in here. If you look at some of these other ones, this one actually has oil and a lot of other things added to it. So the total fat grams actually in this per serving is 13 grams of fat, even though it looks like it's a grain. So you have to really be careful when you're looking at these frozen items. Always see the ingredients. I just want rice. So I'm gonna go with this one. Probably gonna get two of them. It's always good to have backups for when you don't have stuff already cooked. Okay, something else I like to get in this frozen section is these Alexia sweet potato fries. Now, if I'm in maintenance or building, I will get these ones, which are delicious. They do have oil added to them, so it's five grams of fat per serving. But if I'm cutting, I ditch these. These other ones that are just diced potatoes, that's all that's in here. So you have to like pick and choose your poison, right? You wanna go for the things that are really simple, single ingredient items. So I always get the, what I'm cutting. I do just potato diced up, nothing else added to it. And if I'm in building and maintenance and I have a little extra calories I treat, I will do something like this. 
All right, I'm grabbing applesauce. <laughs> so I use this when I do overnight oats or if I do my protein pancakes. Another thing, look at the ingredients. This one is just apples. That's all that's in here. If you see some of these other ones, they say sweetened or they say cinnamon on them. There's not just cinnamon, they do add sugar to some of these. So almost all the stuff here has sugar added to it and that kind of stuff adds up really quickly. So this one, I'm getting the original. There's absolutely zero added sugar. As I discreetly toss chocolate chips, no one saw that. Actually, those are the dairy-free dark chocolate ones I put in my protein pancakes. I'm also gonna grab some Greek yogurt. I um, actually don't have a lot of Greek yogurt on my plan right now, but I like to bake. So if I bake any like protein pancakes or protein muffins, that kind of stuff, even my overnight oats, sometimes I'll put a few tablespoons in there for that extra thickness. This particular brand of Greek yogurt has 22 grams of protein for six ounces. So you could even add just a half scoop of protein to this and you would end up with close to 40 grams of protein in a very small amount of food. This is going in the cart. We have made it to the aisles <laughs> where all the delicious stuff is. So I'm gonna grab some peanut butter and jelly. I like to have a little bit of jelly sometimes on my toast in the morning. I still tend to opt for the brands that don't add a ton of extra sugar. I don't know if they have one here that is like that. The one I usually get is that Trader Joe's. So this brand I know does a lower sugar option. I think the organic one is a lower sugar option. Five grams of added sugar. So that's not too bad. So it's 12 <laughs> grams of added sugar. So hold off and wait till I can go to Trader Joe's to get the one that I like. But it's really important that you look at the labels and really look to see what's in the ingredients. Labels are not an uh, indicator of good ingredients. So they might say all natural, high source of protein. Those are just marketing terms. When I'm looking at these almond butters, like this one's a very popular one right now, this Justin's, oil added to it. So either they add oil by itself with the peanuts or it's peanuts oil and sugar. So you want to make sure that you find one that just says just peanuts or just almonds. I'm pretty sure the store brand here, unsalted, unsweetened, the only ingredient here, dry roasted almonds. So this one is the winner coming home with us. I'm gonna grab some honey because my honey likes to have that sometimes. I also was looking for my sugar-free syrup. I didn't see it here the one that I like. So that's going to be something else I got to pick up at the other store. Something else that I wanted to point out, there's a lot of these brands that are like these diet brands. If you notice, I don't buy a lot of that stuff. I used to. In my earlier days, I used to buy the stuff like this is Walden Farms. <laughs> it's like one of those things where it's like zero sugar, zero this, zero that, zero carbs. It's like zero everything, but somehow it's edible. And over the years, I've actually stopped eating this kind of stuff and opted to find more whole food ways of flavoring and sweetening my foods. So this is something that I actually skip on this brand these days. I don't, I don't go for this kind of stuff anymore. And I think that when people overdo that kind of stuff, you end up with some more GI distress, gut health issues. It's not that one serving is going to do you in, it's that a lot of people have that and then the sugar-free this and the sugar-free that and then all day long, it's just stacking, stacking, stacking and all this sugar-free whatever chemical, wherever this was made, right? I'd rather just find some strawberry preserves, the very low amount of sugar added to it and, and have the real deal, you know? That's just my two cents. So we are in the sauces aisle. I am gonna get some sort of a barbecue sauce something here. I think it was this one that I got last time, which I like. This is a sugar-free barbecue sauce. It's 10 calories for two tablespoons. Pretty much tomato puree, apple cider vinegar, vinegar, some seasonings, and it's sweetened with stevia. So we're gonna go with this one. Here's another brand down here. I haven't tried this one. Oh no, I think we did try this one last time. No sugar added. So I've got two options and we'll see which one we like there. I've also got a reduced sugar ketchup, Dijon mustard. I hated mustard when I was a kid. My parents used to give me mustard as a punishment. <laughs> That's how much I didn't like it. But now I will always have several different flavors of mustard. We do need some coconut aminos and we'll go with the reduced sodium. We do have some Bragg's liquid aminos. This is a great option as well for cooking. That's almost like a soy sauce flavor. This is also great for cooking meats. We're gonna go some with some chipotle Tabasco. Gotta have that. Olive oil. Let's get some balsamic vinegar. And then the same thing with the pasta sauce. So I'm gonna pick one out that is uh, minimal ingredients, low sugar, low fat as well. So a lot of times the pasta sauces, they add either sugar and or fats in there to obviously make them taste better. Though you also don't have to buy the most expensive ones for it to be healthy. A lot of times the store brand is actually healthier than the brand name stuff. So I always start there and I look at 
the store brand versions, the, the sugar content, and the fat content. These are all about the same here. A little bit more sugar than I like. It's six grams of sugar for half a cup, which isn't terrible. I try to keep it under five. Okay, so this one is the store brand. It is a marinara sauce. It's low fat, two grams of fat, six grams of sugar. So overall, pretty decent macros, under five bucks. Trader Joe's has the best one and it is like $3. The other one that I found that actually beats this macros is this one here. Three grams of sugar, almost no fat. It's really just straight pasta sauce, but it's also $10 for the jar. So you start to have to balance out the price. And then I did find one other one that was lower sugar, but the fats went up. I typically would prefer to keep the fats lower and take the extra carbs because my carbs are higher right now. So I'm gonna go with this one for today because I don't wanna spend $10 on pasta sauce. When I do go to Trader Joe's, I'll probably get the one that's there too because that one's always my go-to. As I stand next to the ear candling aisle. <laughs> Has anyone ever done that? Comment below, let me know if you guys have done it before. I'm grabbing a water because I got really thirsty while I were doing this. I basically got a lot of staples here. There's a lot of extra like little things that I might get. These are some basics that I wanna stock our pantry with and that I'll be using this week for cooking. We are gonna stop over at the other grocery store to pick up a couple things that they don't have here. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. So we're at the Butcher Block, Las Vegas, and this is one of our favorite places to come to get some fresh, high quality protein. We are doing some tri-tip today. So we're getting a couple pounds of the tri-tip. I think we're actually clearing them out. <laughs> Brad's gonna get a couple burgers to grill for tonight. If you like some variety, you get sick of plain old chicken breast. They have some great pork loin here. So pork chops, basically. It's actually a very, very lean cut of meat. A lot of people don't realize that. It's basically just as lean as getting a chicken breast. So I've been enjoying having some pork chops lately as a good protein source. So we got our protein. This will probably last us the week. So I'll be coming back here, of course. And our gym, Torture Gym, is actually right next door. Now we're gonna head over to the big grocery store, Smith's, which is basically your general grocery store. Pick out a couple of loose items that we weren't able to get at the first place. See you guys over there. So my favorite uh, sugar-free syrup is this Maple Grove one, and I can only get it in certain stores. I don't do a lot of this, and I don't do this every single day. Like I said earlier, adding this stuff all day long, this is not good for your body. I typically like to go with the real deal, but real maple syrup is very, very high in sugar. Thing because I do use a good amount of it when I do have it. And then I also like to get that I can't get at other grocery stores, or the other grocery store is cream of rice. That is a staple in my breakfast. Not cream of wheat, cream of rice, which is basically white rice that has been ground down super fine. When you cook it, it just makes this big bowl of fluffiness. It comes in this really small package. We're just gonna stock up. It's very inexpensive and a little goes a long way. One serving is a fourth of a cup. This makes quite a bit of food. All right, so something else to be aware of, you know, when you're looking at the oatmeal and the cream of rice section, all these flavors and everything, of course, there's added flavorings, but added sugar a lot of times. Sometimes you can get some of these that are on the lower end of the sugar spectrum, but I just always encourage, get the original plain plain version and then add your own flavoring and sweetening yourself you could even just add a scoop of protein powder to this and then that would sweeten it flavor it and add a huge dose of protein rather than consuming a ton of calories very very low protein and you've consumed a ton of sugar to start your day off so this kind of stuff i would skip and just go for the ones that say original nothing added all right we got a few more things to pick up so i grabbed some liquid egg whites we do already have some eggs at home so we're good there and then i'm also going to pick up one of these irish butter so it's grass-fed butter my opt for this over the kind of shortening and all this other stuff made in the factory and just go for the straight stuff here. If I was cutting and my fats are super low and I'm craving that butter flavoring, sometimes I will get the, I can't believe it's not butter, but that's only if my calories are like extremely low and I'm at the tail end of my dieting phase and I just really have that butter craving. But when I have fats in my diet, I opt for getting my fats from either meat sources, whole eggs, or straight up butter, avocado, oil or olive oil that kind of stuff so this is a staple year-round I'm gonna also pick up Diet Coke I do like to have one of those Diet Coke minis not every single day but like sometimes in the afternoon or evening I'm just craving a little something and I think that wraps it up I'll see you guys back at home all right guys so we are back home and I've got most of my staples and I'm going to stop at one more store actually this weekend and uh, pick up a couple extra little sauces but I showed you guys the basic 
basics of what I get to prepare pretty much 90% of my food. I don't think I showed you guys, I did get a little bit of some dairy that I like to add as some flavorings when I cook veggies and I like to make like a lot of fajita bowls and tacos and that kind of stuff. So I always grab the different types of cheese that I just use like a little sprinkle. This kind of stuff is in my diet right now. It may not be in my diet when I cut because when I do a fat loss phase, you start to clean up the things that add a lot of extra oil or butter a lot of extra fats or unnecessary things that you just can do without when you're in a fat loss phase. It's super important though, when you are picking out things like this that are packaged, that you look at the ingredients and make sure that again, with this one, it's literally just rice. Same thing when you're buying pre-packaged potatoes or vegetables, just because it's in the frozen section and it looks like it's healthy, doesn't mean it's zero calorie or it is what it is. So you always gotta look at the ingredients. Otherwise you could be consuming hundreds of calories per week without even really being aware that there's these extra sneaky fats and oils or sugar contributing into that item. Stick with simple ingredients, especially if you are a newbie into nutrition. Mushrooms I'm gonna saute later and put it on top of my protein sources for extra flavor. Something else I didn't mention, if you get sick of like plain old rice, a great way to add flavoring to your rice when you cook it. This is chicken broth. You could use vegetable broth, bone broth. You add when you cook the rice and that's gonna add a lot of extra flavor to it without adding a ton of calories. This is just 10 calories per serving, especially if you are in a dieting phase. The more that you can look at these things and sort of edit out unnecessary items, the better off you're gonna be. I've talked about this in another video. My main sauces and toppings that I like to use are things like a low sugar or sugar free barbecue sauce, hot sauces, salsa, pico de gallo, marinara sauce are great options that are very low calorie, but full of flavor that you can change up your meals week to week and still stick within your macros. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't pay attention to these things. They don't measure out quantities and they don't really look at the ingredients. They just look at something on the front of the label and go off that. You need to look at the back side of the package and look and see what are the true ingredients of the item. Number one tip for anybody getting started would be to stick with single ingredient items, things like potatoes, vegetables, fruits, any protein source, whether it's meat, chicken, pork, the more that you can include that into your diet, the better off you're gonna be. And then look to cooking your foods, whether it is air fry, grill, pan, bake, using that type of stuff to have more variety. So it's all about the cooking preparation and the seasonings and then finding these toppings that you like. So this is the stuff that I like, but there's gonna be something that you like. And again, this was sort of like a haul of trying to stock this refrigerator and these cabinets with our basics to get started. If I was gonna be making um, a very specific recipe, I'm sure there's gonna be more things that I'll need to go pick up. This style of eating is what's gotten me to where I'm at today without having to do any sort of extreme dieting or elimination diet or anything like that. I've really just kept things simple and learned how to prep foods the way that I like it. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions on meal prep, nutrition, go ahead and comment below. I'd love to discuss this more with you guys and I'll make future videos for you when I do food hauls in the future and meal prep. Thank you for watching.